What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you another upload on Marvel's Avengers. If you remember in one of my posts, I initially said I wouldn't cover any other content pertaining to Square Enix and Sony's inclusion of Spider-Man because I didn't really feel like it was worth exerting any energy into it. Not to mention that when it comes to Crystal Dynamics, they always manage to shoot themselves in the foot with some of their decisions. But after I posted a brief summation of my thoughts on my community tab, many of you wanted to know why I was so disappointed with the gameplay that was shown off on IGN's channel. So I'm going to give you a more in-depth review as well as explain what IGN didn't. But before we do that, I ask that you guys do me the biggest favor and rate the video. It really helps me out on the algorithm side of things and it helps you stay notified on things I post related to this game or any other topics that you might want me to cover. But anyways guys, as I was saying, I wasn't really impressed with what I quote unquote saw on Spider-Man's gameplay reveal. I had to put emphasis on the word saw because some of you thought I was basing my opinion strictly on IGN's review and if you thought that then you must be relatively new to this channel. I've been covering this game extensively since it was announced and I know there's more to it when it comes to the way it plays. The reporter over at IGN didn't really go into complete detail with some of Spider-Man's features like his buffs and intrinsic abilities. Everything was very surface level, so I will be providing you guys with more details on that later in the video, but I feel like I have to stress why this reveal was a disappointment. We gotta talk about the big elephant in the room, which is the animations. For a character who's been in the development of and since Marvel's Avengers was revealed at E3, his movements are very clunky. Like I wasn't expecting him to move like Insomniac Spider-Man, but I did expect him to look more polished. It's almost like the guy that poses Spidey from the Marvel Spider-Man video game jumped over to Marvel's Avengers to live out his dreams. All of his moves just lacked spectacle, which is weird because older games such as Spider-Man Shattered Dimension excelled in the gameplay department, but for whatever reason, all of Spidey's moves in Marvel's Avengers just look janky, especially the web shooting which looks like something you'd see out of an indie developed game. But to be fair, Crystal Dynamics did say that the footage that they provided to IGN was from an early build, so there's a possibility that these animations will be polished to better represent Spidey's graceful movements. But improved animations can only get the web slinger so far, because unfortunately we're still left fighting the same aim enemies which have become so redundant it's not even funny. I don't know when Crystal Dynamics will ever get rid of these things but I will be one happy camper when they do. They've been repurposed to death in the DLCs and even though the War for Wakanda expansion gave us new enemy types they were basically henchmen with aim technology and there were still the usual aimbots peppered in some of the missions. Those enemy types are damage sponges which causes a lot of the cool moves to inflict on them to feel unsatisfying. As you can see in the footage most of the punches don't even register when Spider-Man performs stuff such as this Shoryuken. It's something that's played this game since lunch. Until the devs throw in a patch that makes these things feel more satisfying, we're left to deal with it. Something else that's disappointing is the fact that there's no new story elements to tie in Spider-Man with everything that's unfolded in the past. Crystal Dynamics originally promised that Spider-Man would come with his own unique cutscenes and missions, but according to IGN, this DLC is nothing more than an event, meaning you'll be getting what we've already been playing since the game launched with a few audio files and cutscenes here and there. So we basically got most of the new stuff via the reveal trailer and little animated clips provided on the official Marvel's Avengers channel. There's not even going to be a New York map as many assumed. The closest thing we're going to get to that is the Eastern Seaboard which was made apparent in the reveal trailer. But I'm not mad or surprised that Spider-Man will be swinging from an invisible cloud. And I honestly don't understand why so many of you guys were pissed about this. That's been a thing since the early Spidey and Ultimate Alliance days, so I didn't expect to get that level of detail like Insomniac provided with their version of Spider-Man. The swinging animations look decent enough, and I like the fact that they gave him a zip feature to allow you to pull yourself to enemies. I'm kinda hoping that this will enable us to stay in the air a little longer like in Web of Shadows where you can zip from enemy to enemy after completing a combo, but we'll just have to wait and see. But another thing that I was extremely disappointed in was the ultimate heroic. Like bruh, how many games are you gonna use the web ball? It's been played to death in brawlers. I was expecting something way more creative than that, but as some of you pointed out, there may be alternative specials that can be swapped out in place of this one which is called the Wrecking Ball, but we won't know until we officially get our hands on the game. As you'd expect, the cosmetic side of things has been highly prioritized, so there's obviously going to be a wide variety of suits to choose from with an insane amount of recolors and repurposed assets. Even though I don't plan on forking over any of my hard earned money for any of these skins, I am a little bit concerned. Like I was surprised that the originally designed suit that was shown off in the reveal trailer wasn't featured in the gameplay. Instead, we got the classic suit, which is nice and all, but it has me worried that Crystal Dynamics is going to try to goad me to buy his new outfits which will most likely be the 
epic outfit. I remember how I couldn't wait to play with Kate Bishop in her epic outfit since it was shown off heavily in the promotions in her reveal trailer only to find out that I had to pay for that thing. I couldn't unlock it by means of completing her challenge card since you have to spend real money to even activate it. And since I used all the credits I had acquired for the original lineup of heroes, I had no other choice but to spend my own money which sucked, and I would hate to see them pull this off with Spider-Man's epic suit, which I have a nag suspicion that they'll likely do. Like, you gotta keep in mind that Square Enix has made it abundantly clear that they'll use whatever tactic they need to in order to get your money, man. I mean, they did go back on their promise of implementing pay-to-win tactics in the form of purchasable XP boosters shortly before realizing fans weren't gonna buy that stuff. So don't be surprised if you gotta come out of pocket for that epic outfit for Spidey. But anyways, I wanted to briefly harp on things IGN failed to mention in their review. If I'm gonna be real with you guys, I think it was a bit silly of Square Enix to even grant them exclusive covers to this game in the first place. I feel like they should have put it in the hands of a content creator who actually plays the game as opposed to a company that doesn't really play it at all. Like I knew it was going to do this reveal a huge disservice, especially since all of this was shown before the official War Table event. But thankfully the good people over at Game Informer provided us with the details we needed to get an idea of how the character will play. They mentioned that this version of the Web Swinger won't feature an origin story because he's already an experienced crime fighter at this point. Peter stumbles upon a sinister plot connected to AIM that may be bigger than he can handle. After interacting with Black Widow via her Tiny Dancer online alias, the two exchange information on AIM. He eventually meets the entire team and agrees to tackle this threat alongside them, but struggles to work under a team dynamic. By the end, Spider-Man will ultimately decide whether or not to remain a full-fledged Avenger. Other characters involved in the story include Liz Allen, Peter's friend and college classmate, who players will find in the Ant Hill. Mark Raxon also appears, who comic fans know best as the villain Molten Man, but Crystal Dynamics didn't confirm if we'll see his transformation here. And as you'd expect, Spidey won't be coming with any villains from his rose gallery. It's already been confirmed by IGN that the most we'll get is a horn room training session along with the usual missions, so yeah. But let's go more in depth with the gameplay. As you saw in IGN's footage, Spider-Man won't need ledges or poles to attach to web lines. His webs attach to pretty much anything, even if you don't always see it. Holding down the right shoulder trigger while jumping initiates web swinging, meaning Spider-Man's traversal feels fundamentally different from those of other heroes whose moves are mapped to the jump button. The writer mentions that this design gives players more control over activating and deactivating web swinging and should feel familiar to fans of the dedicated Spider-Man games such as Insomniac series. One of the things they elaborated on that was absent from IGN's review was the wall crawling. If you're an avid player, then you know that characters such as Captain America, Hawkeye, and Black Panther can perform wall runs in small spurts, but Spider-Man can wall run indefinitely. He'll be able to run in any direction as well as snap around corners to leap into web swinging. When it comes to the web shooters, they'll most likely play similar to Black Widow's dual pistols since we see him performing rapid fire webbing. Shooting up targets builds up an intrinsic ability called the Web Status Meter. When full, immobilizes enemies. You can also knock webbed up foes into walls, making them stick there. Webs can also inflict various debuffs unlocked from a skill tree, such as making web targets more vulnerable to damage and status effects from other heroes or causing them to drop more health packs upon defeat. Crystal Dynamics says Spider-Man feels like a support hero in that sense. The web shooters will also have alternate fire modes such as a charge shot, web bombs, a web tether to stick enemies together, and a trap set on floors or walls that ensnare bad guys. Spidey even has a wide reaching web attack that pushes mobs backwards while immobilizing them. Additionally, Spider-Man can deploy a drone that fires web projectiles to help tie up enemies. The drone can also create bubble shields around Spidey, which helps defend objectives. So all that sounds very good, man. I can't wait to see how the webbing will be when it has different buffs such as gamma and cosmic energy applied to it. Stuff like that is when the gameplay really shines as opposed to seeing the moves in their original state. As I mentioned earlier, it's gonna take people who actually play the game to highlight how fun Spider-Man's gameplay can be. But moving on, Game Informer goes more in depth about the ultimate such as the web wrecking ball. It's said that it can deal out crazy damage as well as provide crowd control, but according to IGN, it's a little busted since it occasionally misses targets. However, the finishers can be tweaked or interchanged. Like they mentioned that you could tweak the Wrecking Ball to grant Spidey a buff that covers his hands and feet in boxing glove-like webs to inflict extra status damage with each successive hit. So if you're a fan of the old Spider-Man PS1 game, then you're gonna love that feature. 
One of the mechanics I'm excited about the most is the Spider Sense. Like this is going to separate Spidey from the rest of the pack. If players successfully hit the dodge button when the Spider Sense indicator goes off, they'll be granted a defensive boost, making you sturdier for a limited time period while also inflicting an impact armor debuff to the attacker. Like his other moves, the Spider Sense has a line of upgrades to make evasion even more powerful. And that's about it guys. After reading all these details, it does somewhat reduce some of my concerns about Spidey's gameplay, but as I've stated earlier, awesome gameplay won't alleviate the fact that there's no content outside of that, so it's gonna take the devs to bring us more villains and missions to keep us playing for more hours. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on this. Do you think this DLC is a win, or do you feel like it wasn't worth the hype? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my future videos. But if you really enjoyed this video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.